How's it going everyone? It's Abdallah here bringing you guys a very exclusive interview from the desks and the interview offices of Ubisoft. Now, we've got some really cool Donkey Kong DLC coming out very soon and I'm joined with a very special guest. Xavier Manzanares, I'm the lead producer on the projects and on the DLC itself. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so pumped up for this. Uh, Xavier, now tell us a little bit about what everyone can look forward to in the upcoming new DLC for Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. So we've been working on this for almost a year now. Uh, we wanted to introduce Donkey Kong and what it brings in terms of mechanics and the gameplay itself. So yeah, it's about this new island, huge content, more than 10 hours of content just mm -hmm. for the story. Uh, and with this new mechanics, so I talked about Donkey Kong and the way he plays, a bit more close combat. Uh, also Rabbit Peach that we know, that we change a bit the, uh, in terms of the skill tree and what she does with those heroes. And the third one, Rabbit Cranky. Uh, changing as well a bit the way you could see a fight in terms of turn base and the way you could see Team Jump, for example, where you can shoot mid-air. So basically this was one of the biggest parts of the work of changing the mechanics of combat. Yeah. But at the same time, bring this new island, new adventure, exploration, and customization of everything at the same time. So it's brand new content that we've been working on for many weeks now. Oh, it's... very good. Yeah, it's been very fun. I got some hands-on time with the demo build of the new DLC and just the the way that Cranky Kong interacts with Donkey Kong. It's, it's really cool, aggressive gameplay that you were showing me earlier. It's, it's really fun. So my question to you right off the bat is, you know, why Cranky Kong? Out of all the Kongs and the gigantic Kong family tree, why not like Diddy Kong, who's like way more popular, or Dixie Kong, or anything like that? How did you guys go about finding that, you know, Cranky Kong would be hilarious in the Rabbit's world? Tell me about that process. So, yeah, we started a year ago, uh, sure. thinking about the process of what we would like to add, and uh, we knew that Donkey Kong and Rabbit Peach would be interesting to see as a duo. Uh, in terms of story, in terms of humor, in terms of mechanics as well. Sure. And then we wanted to have a third hero uh, to do the trio. And um, at first we had Diddy and Dixie, because they're, like you said, very popular. And, and we thought, hey, maybe we should try to surprise still, you know, bring <laughs> right, something right. that people do not expect and first Nintendo do not expect. Sure. Um, and uh, we came up with uh, Cranky Kong and say, hey, maybe this old guy could be interesting to mix with the rabbit DNA and see the effects of the rabbit DNA on him. So in terms of he's completely unstable, the mm -hmm. way he acts, the way he is. So it started as just almost a joke. And we said maybe we should continue and find the skills and what he could do uh, with his cane and right. the way he's also acting with Beepo. Uh, the little character they follow is still there with it on the DLC. Okay. So yeah, we had a lot of fun just uh, to surprise everyone with this choice. I'm super excited. Cranky is one of my favorite characters. Uh, now tell us a little bit about uh, the whole concept of implementing Donkey Kong into the world. Like what kind mm -hmm. of hoops did you guys have to jump through? What kind of uh, challenges? Um, all that whole process of getting this brand new character, even though we're kind of teased that Donkey Kong may come around from playing the main game of Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle with a, with a rabid Kong. Yes. So we're kind of teased that we were going to get him, but what was the whole process behind you know, implementing him into the game? So you know, at that time, it was also a year ago, uh, we started to think about what could be interesting characters we could add, and Donkey Kong was one of them. Because basically, yes, like you said, Rabbit Kong was a reference to Donkey Kong in itself. Sure. There were a lot of barrels as well with DK in Ancient Gardens. Yeah. Um, we also worked with Grand Pure Hope, who did the music for Donkey Kong 64, uh, Donkey Kong Land. So he has a lot of experience with this, mm -hmm. and he wanted to uh, as well do a lot of stuff with that. So yeah. we started to think, hey, maybe we could be interesting to propose that to Nintendo. But we didn't know exactly how they would react. Because the way we work with Nintendo is, yes, we have... Uh, we're confident when we work with them now. We have more experience in Mario plus Rabbids. Sure. Um, and at the same time, it's a new IP. It's a new right. character. It's uh, something we didn't have in the main game. So we knew we would work with a different IP team with Nintendo. Um, so basically, Nintendo never takes for granted anything. So it's not because we did Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. They, we can just do whatever character we want. So. We started to do prototypes. So we started with the way we did uh, the game itself in 2014 is really to start with prototypes. Why is Donkey Kong so interesting for you guys in your game that you want him to be a hero? So it started with prototypes around his skills. Uh, so you saw the Dandelion use 
uh, we had also the grab and throw at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, maybe this character could be a close combat, you know, type of archetype. Um, they received a prototype, we discussed with them, and they said, this is interesting, this really adds something new. Um, so that's the way it started. And then in September last year, uh, we sent new prototypes, the island art as well, and what we wanted to do in this, on this island uh, to Mr. Miyamoto. Um, he checked the content, it took uh, a few weeks, we discussed with them, and then uh, it was good to go. And, uh, and they were waiting as well for the third character. Um, Rabbit Cranky didn't come first. And they wanted to make sure the third one was really mixing well with Donkey Kong as well. Uh, so this was the, uh, the challenge that we faced in September, October with third character. Gotcha. Now, I know Nintendo is really strict about their, uh, their individual characters. Mm. Uh, as far as designing Donkey Kong to um, hang around the rabbits and all his little characteristics and uh, quirks about him, how did you guys, uh, what was the process of designing that into the game? So it's true that um, they're protected, but for a good reason. Um, those uh, heroes are in mini games. Mm -hmm. They use it in, uh, in different different games that Nintendo does. So we knew it, and uh, we have the same process on the rabbits themselves. So we knew how to. Uh, well, we understood that. So what we wanted to do really at first is to understand how rap Donkey Kong behave, mm -hmm. how is it designed visually in terms of animation, in terms of his personality. Um, we're discussing just before, but it's exactly this. It's, for example, how he would react to something happening in cinematic from whatever Rabbit Cranky wants to say or Beepo. How does he behave when he's going to lose in combat or when he's going to win? Uh, his winning animation, everything has yeah. to be thought of. And we cannot just take Donkey Kong from this game and just do the same. Right. Uh, Nintendo is really keen on looking into those details of he should be Donkey Kong from your game and you should watch out for this. Yeah. So, yeah, from animation to the rig itself, to the visuals, to the fur, to the way he's looking in cinematics or in combat, the skills, the weapons, uh, and even the skill tree, um, it needs to be logical. Sure. And uh, this was, of course, a huge challenge. Uh, but in the end, they're super happy with the result, and we're happy as well. Wow. I agree. That's like, it's, it's so much fun just to see Donkey Kong like swinging from the dandelions. Yes. That was really fun whenever you're uh, on top of those platforms and doing that. All right. So for those of you guys that have played Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, um, what can we uh, expect out of this DLC? We can expect um, some story modes. You said you mentioned like about 10 hours worth. Yeah. Like what's, what's new and exciting aside from adding in some new characters and uh, the 10 hours worth? What else can we expect? So we change a little bit the structure, if I can start with this. Um, yeah. The structure itself, so you have the main story, and the goal okay. is to have most of the players to finish the storyline itself, because we put a lot of efforts in terms of the uh, narrative, uh, the jokes, the Easter eggs, and uh, the different zones you have in the island. Okay. Um, so it's uh, really important that most players finish that, and then at the end, uh, they will unlock all the challenges on the island itself, and then potentially aim for a second ending, the real ending, when they finish all the challenges, the ultra challenges, etc. So we changed first the structure itself mm -hmm. of the, the main game. Um, then we decided to change, it's a detail, it's a design detail, but it changes when you play, you see it. Uh, before we had chapters with many fights, many yeah. potential fights. Here, one chapter equals one fight. So every time you finish a fight, you get uh, your health back and you, you're ready for the next fight. So it means that every fight can be uh, approached in a bit differently from what we did in the past, where we had to think about many fights in advance. Here, mm -hmm. it's all about what happens and what could happen in that fight. So this is a change of scope and design focus okay. that changes the way uh, you, uh, you play with the, uh, the experience. But then we have also new mechanics. So we talked about Donkey Kong with his uh, really close combat features. Um, his grab and throw, he can grab many things. Oh yeah, you saw the uh, I saw version. That. that was really cool. So covers, half covers, explosive covers, enemies, heroes, sentry weapons. You can even grab if you put the skills in the skill tree, ears from the ground so that the enemy doesn't pop up the next turn. Yeah. You um, can also use the dandelions like you said, so he extends a lot his area of movement. And he's, he's very good to be in duo with Rabbit Cranky or even Rabbit Peach. Mm -hmm. So that's a change in terms of uh, mechanics of character itself. Uh, we could talk about Rabbit Cranky as well with his sure. team jump that, uh, where he shoots mid air. Or he can put to sleep enemies, which changes, of course, a lot what happens on the, the battlefield. Uh, 
but not just about combat, we also have exploration where we added puzzle pieces to unlock zones okay. at the end of the game. Um, and also, the world itself is divided in four different environments. Um, and each of them has some mysteries, puzzles that are specific to the zone. And um, this is something that we've worked from the ground up so that we have something reminiscent of Donkey Kong's lore, but sure. at the same time really you know, it's unique uh, to what we wanted to do with the, uh, the rabbits. Sounds good. Now, when can we expect a release date on something like this? And do we have a, a price point for the DLC, or is that part of something else? Can we reveal that? Uh, is that too early? Okay. Stay tuned, right? Stay tuned. So, so basically, <laughs> the game will be uh, shipping in June okay. 2018, so it's just in a few weeks. Sure, sure. Finishing the last touches. Um, and, uh, yeah. Okay, so we will absolutely stay tuned for that. Sure. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to take a, a really fun break, and we're going to answer some of the questions that we have submitted by some of you guys uh, about some. So we're going to, I'm just going to rapid fire read some off. Sure. And you don't have to go into too much detail. You can dismiss some because some of them are no really problem. hilarious. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Uh, Bowser is a playable character. That's an awesome idea, but it's not possible. All right. <laughs> Wa Wario and Waluigi as a playable character. That's awesome as well. We have them uh, in the rabbit version in the main game. But, yeah, uh, right? DLC, the next DLC pack. We really wanted to have them in the main game, at least in the rabbit form, because we love those guys. They're so <laughs> those guys different from the rest of Mario. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, not possible in this DLC. No. But in the future? We don't know. Who knows? Who knows? All right, here we go. Um, okay, so if you guys can have another crossover, like pretty much like your Ubisoft entire world, thinking outside of Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, and Nintendo, mm. what would you like to see happen? That's a good question. I, I don't have an answer yet or now <laughs> like that. But it was interesting because we have sometimes, you know, brainstorming between us. Sure. And we know that the rabbits uh, start to change a little bit with this game, you know, the way they are and behave with sure. their uh, heroes. So it could be very interesting to see them with different type of heroes in the future. That could be interesting. Okay. But right now we're so focused uh, with Nintendo and what we did so far that uh, nothing official to say. Okay. Uh, playable Rayman. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, the Rayman um, topic is interesting because we heard about it a yeah. lot. Because people remember the time when the rabbits were with Rayman, and they were even maybe potentially expecting something like a DLC with Rayman. And right, it's not happening. Uh, okay. We're really focusing on the rabbits themselves, even though we love Rayman. Uh, but I understand the question. You sure, hear it a lot. Yeah, I'm sure you hear it a lot. That's like yeah. the flagship guy. All right, uh, why does Luigi Dab call the Dab Police? <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was that? Well, actually, it was an animator's idea. Okay. Yeah. And he just uh, ran with it? And in fact, it was integrated even before. Um, I remember because this time it was in between two reviews, and uh, I was about to review with Davide Day content like we do every two weeks, depending on where you are in production. Okay. And um, it was integrated between two reviews. Uh, without telling us. <laughs> really? David knew on the side because he was close to the guy and he knew, but on my side I didn't know. And we did the review, and during the review we had this um, slow motion part where you see Luigi dabbing after sending the sentry. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, this is not possible. Is it the uh, the fake dab that Donkey Kong sometimes do in Mario Kart? In Mario, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, or is it really a dab? But uh, it was a dab. And it was integrated. <laughs> but, I found the idea so cool in the, the context of how it was done right. that we kept it. That you kept it in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nintendo execs didn't question it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the rabbits, we have a lot of um, possibilities in terms yeah. of what we could propose. And this was one of the things that they, uh, they accepted as well, like that. Gotcha. Um, now, everyone and their moms is going to ask, why didn't you include this Mario character into the game, mm. or that Mario character in the game? Um, any ideas about like Daisy, Rosalina, anything like that? Or that's so just... Daisy is on the top of the uh, characters that people ask uh, for some reason. I think there's a community around Daisy. <laughs> for some exists. reason? What do you mean for some reason? <laughs> but <laughs> Rosalina as well, and uh, we had some cool fan art as well, showing okay. some of those characters and what they could look like in the game. Right. So we have a lot of fun reviewing this, yeah. um, but so far nothing planned for uh, the game. Gotcha. 
All right, let's see. Would you guys ever do a, a rabid implementation off of a main series uh, game like Mario Party or um, like a spinoff? Anything like that? Uh, yeah, of course, because Mario Party, then we had the party game in the past with the rabbits. Right. I Nothing that planned. One. Because so far, yeah, the focus has been on this crossover and what it brings with the tactics. Sure. So we didn't really think about anything else for years now. Yeah, right. I mean, it's <laughs> so just we're like breathing tactics in turn base. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, what was your best strategy in capturing the authentic Mario game feeling while... Um, not, while including the rabbits, like how did you mm. keep it Nintendo, but like also add in the funny thing? Like how was how was that for you? So it's hard to answer in one sentence for sure, sure. because it's a mix of things. Yeah. Um, I would say if I take the process and it's the same for Donkey Kong. Yeah. Um, first, you need to respect perfectly the initial character in terms of visual art animation, mm -hmm. and make sure that you really are as close as possible of what exists. And then you need, in terms of animation, really to prove that, hey, he walks, runs, jumps, yeah. exactly the same way I feel it. But then it's all about having the controller in your hand, and it feels as well, even though it's not a platformer. So that was the next step. And then it's all about the visual, the textures, texture work, because we don't work in the same engines between Nintendo and us. Um, so then you add this, so the shaders and how you use them, mm -hmm. the way the light also affects the characters. And then it was about the cinematics in the story sure. and um, how he behaves, like I was saying for Donkey Kong. Um, what is the Mario reaction? Right. And sometimes we think we know because we love those games, we play those games, but then when you work on it, you don't know. Should he be sad sometimes, super angry? Should he look like this? Or should he be surprised? Should he be pissed? Mm -hmm. Can he be pissed? Can Mario be pissed? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, he can take his shirt off, so he might as well be yeah, pissed, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a mix. Uh, and then it's all about iterations. Uh, you have to, you know, send them over. You have to do play tests, and yeah. then you get and receive feedbacks. And the first feedbacks we receive about, hey, really close, as close as we could think. And then sometimes, oh, this doesn't feel Mario, and then we have to correct. Gotcha. So it's a long process. Yeah, I can imagine. All right, uh, this one's a pretty big one. Um, as much as we like couch co-op, you know, mm -hmm. you take a Joy-Con, I take a Joy-Con. What's the uh, thought process about online? Getting this mm. online, drop in, drop out with a friends list. How did you guys, is that a time sensitive thing? Like we didn't have enough time to implement something like that. Was it Nintendo saying, just keep a couch co-op. That, that's kind of what we do, you know what I mean? How, how was that process? So basically, um, when we started to work on the game, and I guess it could be the same for other games as well, but we have to think about the scope and what we want to do. Sure. And from the very beginning, we wanted to do co-op because we felt the turn-based aspects, multiplayer, could be very cool because you could help me and I could right. help you. Because we didn't know how people would react to the turn-based tactics. Um, would it be accessible enough? And co-op was one of the answers. So right. Hey, this could be interesting. So at the very beginning, and for us, the Switch was a nomad platform where you could play wherever you want. And having the ability to play with this little screen, for example, on wherever you want with the controllers locally was yeah. good already. Saying, hey, this is cool. So we focused so much our attention on that, that we didn't design or put in the focus anything that is online. Because online brings new uh, elements that you need to think of. Sure. New challenges, new... It's not just putting online. It's about how do you communicate? Right. How do you do? What do you indicate? How fun it is to be afar because what is fun when you play co-op on the couch is to see the reaction of the other guy and see, uh, hey, uh, maybe I can help you, can show you on the screen there. <laughs> yeah. So it's different. Yeah. And, um, as, and at the very beginning, we decided to really focus our attention on local play. Gotcha. Because I can imagine like if it is online play, like how do you choreograph you know, what you're going to do? There's so much strategy involved with even couch co-op. And that's super interesting, yeah. but it's an, another challenge. Absolutely. Um, and that's not the way we start to design the other co-op at first. Gotcha. All right, let's see. What do we got? Um, planning on adding anyone else into the game? Heroes or? Sure, heroes. Well, hard right. to say right now because right. we already added uh, those guys. Uh, so Donkey Kong, Rabbit Cranky, the sure. original version. Yeah. So it's hard to say because the focus is too much on this so far, so nothing planned. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let's see, let's see. 
did all of you guys manage to beat the ultimate challenges? Like everyone in the office, did everyone do that? No way. Is that like a, a prerequisite? <laughs> <laughs> like no, who's done it? Actually, the design in ultimate challenge, challenges, but even more ultimate challenges, is almost a bet that the level designers and game designers are doing to the team. Okay. So we were gonna create something that is doable. Okay. Or else it's not gonna be validated, but doable only by a, a selected few within the team even. So let's explain to the viewers who don't know what ultimate challenges are. Yeah. What, what is that? So you beat the main game, right? You go through the story mode, then what? And then you have those four ultimate challenges that are there to challenge you on everything that you've learned. Okay. So we can use mid bosses, we can use different type of enemies, we can change what we could see on the screen, we could put like a lot of uh, explosive covers in the way we want. We break the rules that we've set up for the normal fights, okay. where we want really to have some sort of play style possible here. Ultimate challenges, they don't care. All they care is for you to sweat <laughs> and making sure that you're gonna die, but at the same time, it's doable. Got it. Uh, so and that's you, the design. You've completed all of them. Yeah, so, so <laughs> But it's a cool process in production because we're doing it for uh, the uh, Donkey Kong Adventure as well. Is right. level designers and game designers come up with this plan and testing within the team, and sometime with the testing team, QC or QA, saying, uh, "We cannot beat that map, so we cannot submit this." And then, yes, you can. And then we do a videos, and they do uh -huh. a video to see how we can do it. Yeah. So it's possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like a challenge for us first, and then gotcha. we put it in the game. Whew. Can't wait to try those. Yeah, right. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, what's the what's your take on making a sequel to the game versus just keep on going with DLC? So of course we have tons of ideas that we want to integrate in the DLC. We did them. Yeah. Um, we would love to work on in the future and new stuff, but so far it's too soon to say. Yeah. Would yeah, say, we would we're so focused on DLC and we still have a lot of uh, weeks in front of us, so yeah. Uh, did you guys expect the game to get as popular as it did? Uh, in terms of Donkey Kong Adventure? I'm just talking about the game in general, Mar plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Did yeah, you guys we, think that it would get like super popular on that? So we had a lot of uh, tremendous support and feedback since we launched the game. Yeah. Uh, we see as well communities starting to discuss about that and uh, a lot of activities around what is coming. Yeah. Um, I think people will be happy to see as well what we start to reveal with this uh, new adventure. So I would hope that it stays as something unique and uh, something that people want to make their friends or family discover uh, in terms of tactics and turn base. So we're very happy of this unique approach that we took because it's something that uh, is easy to say, hey, test this, it's different. Good answer on that one. All right, let's see. Uh, we talked about Waluigi and uh, Wario, which is really fun. <laughs> Everyone seems to be asking about that. All right, was, how about scrapped ideas? Talk to me about scrapped ideas. Scrapped ideas. Like something that you guys came up with and um, you were like really gung-ho about this idea, but then mm. it's just like, all right, well, maybe not. Let's talk about something like that. Mm. that I think that's a big piece to end off the interview. <laughs> so give me some... It's true that, you know, that. during production we had a lot of ideas, things we wanted to share, and then we got answers saying, no, no way. Um, maybe the one I remember the most, because still today I wonder, uh, but I think it was the best not to put it. Um, we had in fights um, uh, what we called fumble, and um, you could fumble during the, the, the combat. Okay. So basically your weapon could turn against you. Okay. With a uh, percentage of chance. So for example, you were aiming someone far and your weapon was really strong, but because it was really strong, the, the common part was that it was high, the possibility that it uh, shoots you instead okay. is high as well. All right. So we had a lot of um, elements around this. Sure. Uh, it's not just this, it was also, for example, um, um, you could add that to the super effects. So burn, push, bounce, mm -hmm. the weapon just explodes. And then okay. you get yourself bounced or pushed. And then it became even a strategy. Uh, some of our weapons at that time had a very low percentage of uh, damage in terms of uh, uh, the damage output and critical, but a high possibility of you know, uh, exploding. And it's cool because, for example, in PvP, yeah. co-op, you could use this as a way to get out of the situation. Sure. On bouncing yourself, 
and then maybe get out of this situation because you don't have a movement phase anymore. So it started to be really complex, but really <laughs> cool. And then at the same time, is it cool? And then we did some play tests and we saw people saying, I hate this part where <laughs> my weapon behaves exactly at a almost kill the enemy and then no, just the weapon explodes. So yeah. we put that out, but it took many months to decide to do this and gotcha. push this out. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, that sounds very interesting. I, I'm glad that's not in there, I guess, because <laughs> I can imagine if I'm about to KO a boss or something like that and then I misfire and I end up losing, but... It's very exotic, Yeah. Uh, but sometimes we think about it just in case maybe we found a solution for that, but no, I think it's a, be it's a better game without it. Yeah, I yeah. would say so. But either way, what could have been, right? What could yeah, have been? Well, exactly. All right, well, that concludes our interview over here. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks Thank for uh, generating the hype around the brand new upcoming uh, Donkey Kong DLC. I can't Thank wait you. to get my hands on it. You guys can totally stay tuned to my YouTube channel where we're going to be covering every little bit of the 10 plus hours that we're going to get out of this thing. So I'm super excited for it. All right, so all the uh, information that you guys need are, is going to be in the description, uh, release date, all that stuff, and we'll be good. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys uh, smash that like button, share the video, and of course, subscribe for even more Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Thank you. Thanks.